All right, so yesterday I briefly talked about um, what our next project was. And what I wanna do is I want to show you this. I will put this up on Schoology, um, but we're gonna be making foil figures. So I told you, those of you at home, um, you wanna be finding aluminum foil, whether it be, um, you know, you go, go to the grocery store to get it, or if you have it, hopefully you have it at home. And we're gonna make figures out of them. So um, the figures that I want you to make are um, going to be doing something. So let me show you some examples. Um, you know, you can make pretty basic forms like this one, real skinny and long and just kind of sitting back, or you can start to add a little bit more to your figure, have it look a little bit more proportionately um, accurate. And then you can have something like this guy doing something, obviously going to stab someone. Um, here is just basic figures in different positions. Uh, kind of looks like a yoga class almost. And then you got some dancing ones. But you can see how the figures are not like realistically developed. I mean, you can go further and further into developing your pieces. Um, some of these are pretty basic. Um, or you can also choose to do animals. So there's a couple of different animals I'll show you. So you don't have to do a human-like figure. You can do an animal if you wish. Um, so I'm going to show you this YouTube. Um, this is just real basic information about um, making your piece with starting with a flat piece of aluminum. They obviously painted theirs. And this Now we have our 
two legs, and now we're going to do the same with our two arms up at the top. Just remember, take your time, do it slowly, and you remember not to pinch too hard. Allow yourself room to keep shaping the corners like. So now we're going to do the torso of our figure. So we're going to start on the sides just like we did with the legs and arms. But we're slowly going to form the torso. Now we're having, and now it's slowly looking like a figure. We got our arms and legs and torso. Now we have our head and our neck. So we're going to start with the head. We're going to slowly crinkle what's left into a ball, trying to get it into the right shape and uh, form to form the head. Just like you did, everybody have to take your time. And now that we have the head, we have to form the neck. So we're at the bottom, we're going to pinch in a little harder. have our tinfoil figure that is ready to be shaped and formed into any shape or activity you would like. So pretty simple, right? Great. So here's another way of approaching it. You could do this kind of at an angle. Um, so you would make a cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, and then the legs. It may give you a little bit more um, torso than what I've been discovering the way um, that was done. And then the other way is if you know the position that you want, you could crumple up newspaper and then put foil over it. But when you do this route, um, you're not going to be able to bend it and, and form it or uh, position it as easily as if it was just aluminum foil. So like I said, you can also do animals. So um, I'm gonna show you a video of someone making a T-Rex, but um, animals are gonna be a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more components, a couple more um, appendages than uh, just a, a human figure, but um, you can, kind of guess how to go about doing it. And then also you can always add foil. You don't have to just use your one piece of foil. So um, this is really fast, but um, you can see how they made this T-Rex. It's really loud too.
All right, so I'm gonna stop that there. They make a little person um, real quickly. But um, what I wanna point out on this particular piece is that um, they used a wire embedded in the leg and that helped it stand up. Plus they used a base for it to stand on. So that helped it have that like singular leg that it was balancing on. So if you do have that kind of stuff, you certainly can add to your piece and um, help it that way. And if you notice, they also worked from a sketch. So um, that is something that you might consider if you're doing something other than a, a human figure. So it's just some examples of, um, of things of, you know, here's an alligator, um, I'm sorry, here, you know, a bunch of different animals that were created with aluminum. And then, so once you make your figure, no matter if it's uh, animal or people, I want you to put it into an environment, doing something or uh, being somewhere. So, um, you know, this guy's skateboarding, painting. Can I try to make a, um, can I try to make a, um, of a human riding something? Oh like yeah, animal? like a horse? Yeah. Oh, cool, that would be awesome. Yes, that'd be awesome. So then here's this guy fishing and you can see these figures, you know, they're just not that refined, but you know, it's obviously they're put in these positions and you can kind of tell what they're doing. So a couple more, looks like this woman, it might be playing a violin, I can't really tell. Um, and the guy playing basketball and then Batman with his cape kind of flowing in the wind. So, um, I definitely want you to think about where they're, what you're going to do with them. And then also as far as photographing, like you can see how nicely this is done. This looks like there's just two pieces of paper here, one on the ground, one in the back, and it's photographed that way. You know, this has this yellow paper here, which may be the base that it is actually standing on, but there's nothing in the background as compared to the ones previously where there's all this stuff in the background it's not as easy to see these pieces the best in the best manner as compared to the ones hit that are done with these kind of singular colored backgrounds and how much the um, image takes up the entire frame. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to um, Give out some foil here, get everybody started here. And um, no. yeah. Are you allowed to do um, Star Wars characters? Oh, that'd be awesome. Yep. Certainly. Um, so I'm going to kind of leave this here for the moment and then I'll be back and I'll start making my own. Actually, what I'll do is get rid of this. I'm going to stop my share. And I'm here. Okay, so here are a couple of figures that I made. I try and working on these hands. Here's another one that I'm trying to add to his. Um, body so i'm trying to build up his torso here so i'll be right back all right you guys want some oil? And the good thing is there's markers and rulers and tables up on that table no, it's, hard to it's not but if you were watching it you're not looking at the phone so you guys i'm going to give you a sheet but you can Scissors, that kind of stuff up here. 
All right, these guys for the moment. And I'm gonna Yeah. All right, so you're going to take your ruler. Now, my foil is 12 inches across, and I didn't really measure, but it's almost 12 inches. So I'm going to start with the 12 inches across, and I'm going to mark off four and eight. And that will divide my piece into thirds. So mark out four, mark out eight. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna mark off six. And then I'm, I'm gonna follow this guy's uh, recommendation. I'm gonna go five inches down so for each mark, I'm going to make a mark five inches down. And then at the bottom, I'm going to go five inches up. So my piece See the marks on there? All right, did you draw, the, draw them up? No. Let's see what you got. Okay, you made your marks. Okay, so now you're going to take your paper and you're going to find five inches. And you're going to draw down each of those marks. So this one is supposed to be six inches. Yeah. Like six. But you know what? You're better off with the marker. Because it, it, it writes better on. Um, um, Good. 
Now, just make sure you cut up to here, and then here to here and here. Great. Now I'm going to make my cuts. And then you start with the legs and you just kind of crumple it in towards the center. Now remember you want it round, you want it half dimension, you don't want it to be really flat. So you just kind of slowly crumple it in. And do the other side. Then you do the arm. I got so far. Looks a little bit like SpongeBob. I'm going to do the torso. This. And this top part gets crumpled into a circle. That's kind of what I got. I always find that the arms are too long, so I do cut some away. And you can just keep kind of pressing with it at this point then. I'm really working hard to try and make it round. And I noticed one leg is longer than the other. So I'm going to cut some of that away too. And then at this part, I'm just kind of pushing and shaping, making it as round as possible. I do tend to bend here to make feet. Oh my god, I like that so far. Great, right. how you doing? Good? Mm -hmm. Yep, looks good. Okay.
when we're doing the torso. Style, we do our style. You just kind of take it like this. Um, All right. The horse thing we're going to really have to work on. Yeah. See how that works out. All right. So then from this point, I mean, I could really keep adding more aluminum if I wanted to build up the body. I kind of did that here on this guy, added a little bit. I also, on this guy, made his hands. And the way I did that, okay, let's try to make some lining. As I flattened out the bottom, get rid of some more of this. And I'll cut fingers.
SCP. What's the SCP? Oh, so what you want to do is probably add some more foil to the head to make it bigger. SCP. <laughs> So long. <laughs> yeah, and then you probably want to cut those. Yeah. You can use your scissors to cut the arms. I always cut my arms. Because, um. I want to get an SCP and then it looks weird. Yeah. And then you can crumple up this to make his head a little bit bigger. You guys doing okay over there? Yeah. Great. So that's just the beginning. Anybody have any questions, concerns? No? All right, I'm going to stop this recording.